Let's take a look at parallelism applied to a surface. So the first thing we'll notice is that the geometric tolerance is attached to the extension line. So we just follow the extension line and see what surface it's attached to. That's what the geometric tolerance is applying to, nothing else in this case. The next thing we'll look for is the datum reference. So this is reference to datum A, which is this surface down here. Okay, we've got a dimension of si a size dimension right here, letting us know what the overall tolerance of the surface is. And we've got a tolerance for the geometric tolerance of 30 thou. So this 30 thou is going to, in reality, be two parallel planes that are parallel to datum A that float within the larger size tolerance right here. We've got a diagram of what's going on with that particular tolerance. So the first thing I've done, these two blue dimensions indicate the limits of size for that surface. So no matter what, it's got to be between 0.6 and 0.7. So I get that by adding 0.05 to 0.65 or subtracting 0.05. I get those two numbers. Those are our limits of size. The boundary of perfect form still applies. So if it comes in at 0.6 or 0.7, we have no additional tolerance for the parallelism. It can't be above or below those two numbers. Where the parallelism comes in is going to be shown by this green line. So these green lines represent planes. So we're only looking in two dimensions, but just imagine they go the full length, the depth, and breadth of the part. They're 30 thousandths apart. I've designated it with this dimension. The surface of the part has to live between these two planes. It can be uh, wavy, it can be diagonal, it can be any shape as long as it lives between those two planes. Now, what the geometric tolerance gives you is you can have these planes be down here toward the bottom of the size tolerance zone or up here toward the top of the size tolerance zone. So if you think about it, if you make this on a machine, maybe a milling machine, you just have to make sure that the bottom of the part is sitting flat right here. You can cut across the top. Machines typically make things square and you don't have to worry as much about the height. You've got a lot of tolerance here but little less tolerance left to right. So that's the advantage of the GDNT. You get more tolerance where you need it. As far as functionality goes, say this part had another part sitting on top of it, right? So you had building blocks or something. You might not care how tall it is, but you want the next block that sits on top of it to be more or less level. So that's the control that parallelism gives. One other note is that parallelism, in this case, also controls flatness. So these two planes, 30 thou apart, do the exact same thing as a flatness tolerance 30 thou apart, except that the orientation tolerance just adds more restrictions. A flatness tolerance could be diagonal through this whole tolerance zone. The parallelism, both of these planes are parallel to datum. A.